Before we start this video, let's go back in time. The Queen Elizabeth, often known as HMS Queen Elizabeth, is the fleet flagship of the Royal Navy and the lead ship of the Queen Elizabeth class of aircraft carriers. She was given the name HMS Queen Elizabeth in remembrance of the first HMS Queen Elizabeth, a super dreadnought that served during World War I and was able to carry a total of 60 aircraft, including both fixed wing and rotary wing planes as well as unmanned aerial vehicles. The Queen Elizabeth is adorned with her namesake ship's honors, a Tudor rose on her crest, and a motto. Her name comes from the English word for queen. There is a great deal of interest being shown in the HMS Queen Elizabeth and her sister ship. There is enough room on board this magnificent ship to accommodate up to 40 different types of aircraft. Even while it has an unusual storage, the fact alone is not sufficient to make this carrier stand out from others on the market. Why did the British Navy decide to go with such a design for their newest and most advanced aircraft carrier, which has the world's first ever twin island layout? Now now, I know you are just as fascinated as I am, so hold on tight as we tackle further in this episode. Hello and thank you for making your way to high technology, home of all things technological. In this episode, we will discuss the answer to the question, why are there twin islands in Queen Elizabeth carriers? So be sure to tune in. Make sure to click that notification bell and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already done so. Now, let's get on with it. The only place to find the answer is exactly below deck, in the engine room. This is your only option. In order to maximize reliability and redundancy, the aircraft carriers of the Queen Elizabeth class each have two engine rooms that are physically separated from one another. HMS Ark Royal was sunk during World War II by a single torpedo hit, which led to flooding in the engine room and ultimately resulted in the ship sinking. Both the HMS Queen Elizabeth and the HMS Prince of Wales have developed their own unique propulsion systems as a consequence of this. As a byproduct of this, even if one is damaged, the other can carry on with their work. However, this presents a hurdle due to the fact that each propulsion system has its own independent set of exhaust shaft, and the gas turbine is required to be positioned at the base of the vessel. Because the exhaust pipe has a diameter of 2.4 meters and cannot be easily bent, the shaft has to be positioned so that it is effectively on top of the engine room. Because the intake and exhaust pipes are hidden by the enormous megastructure of the islands, the newest British air carriers may have either one long island like the Invincible class carriers or two smaller islands. The engineers in the United Kingdom conducted an in-depth study to determine which design is best, and they came to the conclusion that there is no clear winner. The architects and engineers worked on developing the two islands so that they could act as a backup plan in the event that one of the islands was damaged. If the bridge is severely destroyed, it is possible that all ship functions can be managed from the control tower without encountering any latency concerns. This is implied by the above statement. In the event that the control tower receives damage, all of its responsibilities can be taken up by the bridge in its stead. After going over all of that, we will now talk about the 5 positive aspects of having a twin island design as well as the one big negative aspect. The first benefit is that the footprint left by the two smaller islands is far less than that left by the bigger island. A significantly more efficient utilization of the space that is available would be to install an aircraft lift in the region that is located between the two islands. The flight deck will also experience less turbulence in the air as a second benefit. Since flying an airplane in turbulent air is a significant challenge, air that is less turbulent is always preferable to air that is more turbulent. The third benefit is enhanced visibility, which is beneficial for both the control of the airplanes and the operations of ships. To provide a crew on the bridge with increased view, particularly in waterways that are more congested, the front island can be moved closer to the bow of the vessel. Huge windows that reach up to 3 meters in height provide occupants of the Flyco Tower with a 260 degree view of the flight deck below. When going over landing procedures with the pilot, having such view streamlines the process and raises the flight controller's level of awareness of what's going on. Flight control, commonly referred as the Flyco, is traditionally considered to be nothing more than an appendix portion of the bridge. 
On the other hand, if you have a second island that is only devoted to Flyco, you can put it in a much more advantageous location towards the stern of the carrier because that is where the planes land. The design of the twin islands make it possible to obtain a better separation of the major raiders. Which brings us to the fourth advantage of the design. The inclusion of two radar systems, each of which is positioned on a different island, helps to reduce the amount of signal interference and blind spots that are currently in use in the functioning of the system. Now we get to the last advantage which is by no means the least important. They may be manufactured as separate components away from the location of the hull, and then they can be assembled there at a later time. This is surely not the least significant advantage if one were to build a vast island island out of several modules, the process would be much less complicated and more straightforward. Now that we've covered that, let's speak about one of the drawbacks. However, it seems that the actual physical distance is the most significant disadvantage. As can be seen, the island in front is primarily utilized for ship control, while the island in the back is used for flying control. This is due to the fact that launching and landing an aircraft from a moving ship requires a certain level of expertise. It suggests that there must be continuous interaction between the ship's control and the flying control at all times due to the direction of the ship, because launches and landings require precise control of the speed. It is helpful to have ship control officers and flight control officers working together in close proximity. This makes things simpler. They had no choice but to communicate via intercoms as a result of their dispersion across a number of islands. It will take some time before you are able to adjust to this new circumstance. That is what is said to be uttered in the event that one of the islands is put in danger. It is possible for the second one to play the role of the second one, and vice versa. Even if there is a problem with the intercom, everything can be still controlled from one of the islands so the situation is not ideal. In general, its design seemed to have a significant impact on the criteria that apply to aircraft carriers. Imagine that you had just one carrier that offered all of these fantastic perks. The lessened air turbulence above the flight deck, the enhanced flexibility of space allocation in the lower decks, and the larger flight deck size all contributed to the improvement. The flight control center that is located on the aft island is in the greatest possible position for controlling the critically important aircraft approach and deck landings. Now that we have that out of the way, what are your thoughts on the design? Is it efficient? Shouldn't all aircraft carriers implement this technique? Put them all in the comment section down below. We would love to hear from you. And that brings today's episode to a close. We are extremely grateful that you were able to watch this episode of High Technology with us. Make sure to give this video a like and then tell us what you think of today's video by leaving a comment down below with your opinions. Also, in order to ensure that you never miss an episode, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and enable the notification bell. And that wraps up everything for today. See you all tomorrow.